Uh, welcome everyone to the introduction to scripting workshop. This is the second part of a three part series uh, hosted by Columbia Global Centers and CUIT Research Computing Services. This fall, the Global Centers, as part of a university initiative to support international students and students who are living outside of the United States, has made it possible for students in 65 cities around the world to access high end study spaces to convene, connect, and be supported as part of the Columbia community. In addition to these spaces, the Columbia Global Centers is developing programs and events such as this week's series of computer workshops. So today we're very excited to bring you the introduction to scripting. Um, this builds up um, the prior intro to Linux workshop, and then it will conclude with the third workshop in the series, um, introduction to high performance computing. Um, <clears throat> And there will also be uh, an intro to uh, Python next week at 4 p.m. Eastern time. And I believe our colleagues are planning to bring you um, additional programming, perhaps 3D modeling introductions and things like that. Um, so we're very excited to uh, work with Global Centers uh, to bring you this content. So my name is George Garrett. I'm part of the Research Computing Services team at Columbia University IT. Um, I'll be working with uh, my colleagues, uh, uh, Exenia Radova, who will be instructing today, and Michael Weisner, who will be fielding the questions and answers. And um, we are part of the team that um, helps support uh, research computing at Columbia University. Um, one of the things we do is support the, the high performance computing systems, also called supercomputers. We have a couple of those. You'll learn about those in next week's, next Thursday's workshop. So I encourage you to uh, consider attending those. Um, as we go today, uh, if you have any questions, um, please uh, type those in the Q&A uh, or in the chat, um, and we'll field those uh, as we go. Um, so again, welcome, and I'll hand it off to my colleague, Exenia. Uh, <clears throat> welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us and participating in today's workshop. Um, we are very excited and we would like to hear uh, why did you choose to attend the intro to script thing and uh, what uh, do you hope to gain from attending the workshop today? Uh, can you please type your answers in the chat box? Your feedback is very uh, valuable and it's going to help us to address uh, those questions in the future. Now I'm going to share my screen. Also, just for those looking at the chat, uh, there's a couple links there that we'll be uh, referencing during the uh, workshop today. Okay, I think that... I hope everybody can see my uh, slides now. And um, this is uh, part two of a series of uh, research computing workshops. And um, this is introduction to shell scripting. And you can reach us at uh, rcs at columbia.edu. If you have any further questions uh, and uh, slides from this uh, workshop will be sent afterwards to everybody. And what is shell scripting? Uh, a file with uh, shell commands. Um, and why use scripts? Shell scripting is very useful in creating uh, your own commands. Uh, it is helpful in automating some task of the day to day life. And uh, here we have some scripting resources that you can uh, use in the future if you are interested. Uh, how Linux works and uh, some uh, tutorials. Um, and there are more here. Uh, for today, today's workshop, we are going to use again uh, Cunix uh, uh, system. Uh, this is what we used uh, for the first uh, workshop uh, intro to uh, Shell. And um, the system is cunix.columbia.edu and the user is your uni, Columbia Uni. 
for uh, Windows users, um, you need to download and I hope that everybody has putty and execute it from the desktop. And for Mac uh, users, uh, you need to use the terminal. Uh, you need to type uh, terminal and just click on the icon and uh, you'll get this window that I have on my uh, left side. And uh, for Mac users, you are going to use the terminal and we are going to use SSH and then your uni at unixcolumbia.edu. This is how we are going to log in on uh, Unix servers. Uh, and uh, for Windows users, you need to open um, the GUI of uh, Putty and the host name is unix.columbia.edu. And again, the username is your uni from Columbia. Um, now I'm going to SSH because I use Mac and my uni is AR2667 at unix.columbia. Yeah. And I'm going to use my Columbia password, uh, which is associated with my uni. And this is going to land me on one of the two servers, uh, Unix Prod 2, and we have Unix Prod 01. Um, I'll give you a few seconds uh, to log in and make sure that uh, everybody is on Unix server. If you have any issues, please let us know. And um, uh, I'll do a quick review from uh, last workshop. Uh, we talked about shell um, where user, it, it is a user interface interface to the system and the shell is a program where users can type commands. Um, this is the dollar sign is the standard prompt symbol. Uh, PWD was one of the first commands that uh, we learned last time and is showing the current print uh, working current directory. Um, it is very useful because it shows you where you are. Uh, CD is change directory. If you want to move from one place to another, this is how we uh, we use CD. Uh, single dot uh, is the indication of the current directory. Last time we used to copy files from the temp directory to our current directory, which was our home directory. Uh, LS is another command uh, which lists the content of the directory. Um, and we also learn about CAT, uh, which stands for concatenation and you can concatenate uh, many different uh, text files and also prints the content of the file on the screen. Um, we use sort command uh, to sort the lines of uh, file. However, sort is very powerful and there are a lot of options that comes with uh, sort and you can sort numerically, you, say, you can sort recursively, uh, and we are going to use the command today again. Uh, grab uh, print uh, lines matching a pattern, and uh, also we are going to do some exercises with grab today, and we are going to use it in our scripts. Uh, echo high, um, it was uh, taught last time, echo prints uh, messages and text on the screen. Um, sleep five puts uh, the process, the system to wait for five seconds and then uh, comes back to the prompt or um, if you have uh, this in a script, it's going to stop some process, wait and then continue. Uh, man command is um, very valuable. Uh, this is the manual uh, for all um, Unix commands. You can type man and the 
recommend that you're interested to see what are the available options and flags. For example, men sort, you can uh, see what are the possibilities. For example, like this, and this is all the flags and options for sort command, and you can use it with any of the uh, commands. And to get out from uh, the manual, you need to press Q and uh, this will take you back to the command line. And uh, for today uh, workshop, uh, we need to get the files that are in slash temp slash work uh, directory. This is the absolute path to the files on the server. And um, first we are going to create uh, our uh, directory where we are going to do our uh, work today. And uh, we'll uh, give the name of the directory workshop. MK dir is going to create a directory and um, workshop. And um, just to confirm that after we logged in with PWD, we are in our home directory and we created in this directory, subdirectory workshop, and we can confirm this with LS, which shows that I have the directory created here. And now we are going to CD to workshop. And with CP command, we are going to copy the files from temp work to our current directory. CP TMP slash work. Don't forget the uh, first slash because this is the root directory and it's important. And then single dot, this is our current directory. And now we are going to check whether um, we got the files here with ls minus l. It's going to show that we got four files, alice.txt, if, uh, read your mind, and w count. Um, if you have any issues, please let us know. Uh, I would like everybody to be able to get the files in their um, workshop directory that is created in the home directory. And um, we are going uh, to use uh, some uh, commands from uh, word count. Uh, this is um, a hands-on guide demonstrate how the flexibility of the command line can be can help you become a more efficient and productive data scientist. Uh, it is a nice resource. And uh, here is the information. And um, in the chat, uh, we um, send the URL to the Gutenberg project where there are a lot of uh, text files and uh, um, there um, very valuable uh, data set. And uh, I'm going to show you how to download plain text uh, version using curl command. Um, you need to type first curl and uh, URL and with re redirection, the greater sign, you can save the text uh, in a text file. And if I go to Gutenberg, um, and click on any of uh, the books and get the text file URL. This is the text file. I can copy the URL from here. And um, let's go back to the presentation. I copy the URL and with the command curl, And I'm going to redirect the output from curl command to novel. 
Txt. And if I press enter, you can see that um, I downloaded the text file on uh, my machine and we can come and save the output in the novel.txt file. And with the command cat, we can see the content of the novel. And this is what we saw on the website. And this is just to show you how you can get different data sets that are available on the uh, internet. It is easy to use that one. And um, we are going to uh, continue with pipes. Pipes uh, connect output from one command to the input of another command. And uh, here in our uh, work shop directory, we have the file Alice, and we are going to cat Alice. And I'm using the tab completion, which is really um, useful and help me um, get the files and the commands uh, without typing. And then I'm going to pipe the output from cat command and use grep to find the pattern rabbit. And this is going to pull all the lines from Alice uh, text file with the words rabbit. And if I press return, I am going to get five lines where rabbit is detected, as you can see here. Um, we can uh, expand the pipes and connect uh, with the uh, pipe more uh, commands. With the upper error, I'm going to invoke the last command that I executed. And I'm going to add pipe sort. And this is going to sort alphabetically the lines that uh, have the pattern rabbit. And we are going to use another command tr, which is translates characters. This means that grep is going to pull all the lines from uh, the file Alice with uh, the, the pattern rabbit and translate all the Rs with W substitute them. And tr, and I want R to become Ws. And you can see that everywhere in um, the file where I have R, for example, never became never before and wabbit and all the Rs are substituted with R or with W. And um, in the workshop directory, we have another file uh, w count that we're going to use. And if there is a big pipe command, if we cat w count, you're going to see that uh, there is a very long pipe command which is going to um, translate all the um, uppercase letters like here to lowercase and then uh, grab uh, with this um, options minus O, lowercase and lowercase O and cap, uh, uppercase E, um, it will match all the single words and then sort them, um, count the unique instances of each word, sort them numerically and in recursive order. Um, also, 
put a number of the lines and then with head minus 20, this is the whole thing here, with uh, head minus 20, we are going to see the top most frequent, uh, top 20 most frequent words in the text. And if we try to execute the file, W count, we are going to get a prompt from Bash that W count command is not found. Because if you look here, it is just a file is not executable. And the permissions that we have are for the file are also only read and write. This is for the owner group. And we need to um, change the permissions of the owner group uh, to be also executable. And even if we try this slash w count, it's saying that the permissions are denied because we have only read and uh, write permissions, not execute. And um, this is what we are seeing here. And with chmod command, we can change the permissions um, of a file. And we are going to give executable permissions to the owner group, um, to the owner and uh, the group and everybody else with this command chmod. We are adding executable permissions to the file. And if we check uh, W count, it's changed uh, even the color with the setup that I have of my uh, uh, terminal. And as you can see from read, write, and only read permissions for uh, the group and uh, everybody else, now we have executable permissions for the owner, for the group, and for everybody else. And um, if we execute dot slash w count, now the program is working. The execution went through, and we can see that the most frequent word in the file is the followed by and and then two. Um, probably you are going to wonder why T and S are here. This is because we have um, words like uh, doesn't or um, when it's uh, apostrophe uh, S. For example, here this hadn't. It was parsed from the grab command because we are looking just for the words um, and the letters and separated uh, hidden to hidden and then T. And this is very often, that's why it send it in the top 20. Is there any questions how we are doing so far? There's just been a couple like uh, questions to, for things like um, escaping man pages and how to paste things. Uh, but it's probably a good time if anyone else has questions, just uh, can chime in or put them in the chat. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Michael. And um, with the command file, we can determine the type of uh, the file. And if we type file w count, uh, we'll get a prompt from Bash that this is a ASCII text file. And um, we are going to use uh, nano editor uh, for this workshop. Other options are VI and Tmax, and uh, they need a little bit of learning curve. Uh, 
um, but they are very powerful. And uh, Emacs is a little bit more complicated. Um, but let's use nano commands uh, are going to be found on uh, the following cheat sheet and uh, the link to the cheat sheet is uh, shared in the chat if you would like to take a look. And if we open um, W count with nano, we'll get um, the comment, the pipe uh, that is um, inside the file. And now we are inside the nano editor and um, we are going to add hashtag exclamation point and followed by slash bin slash sh on the top of the file. And uh, this is called uh, Shebang and it tells the shell uh, what program to interpret the script uh, with and when it's executed. And um, we are going to use the shell interpreter. Let's type slash bin slash sh. And to write, uh, to save uh, what uh, the changes in the file, you need to do control O and it's going to prompt you for the name of the file where the changes will be saved. Press enter and then with control X, we can exit the nano editor. And Let's execute the file again. And you can see that it still works, but this time it used the bash interpreter. And uh, this is the uh, different types of interpreters for uh, uh, shell, bash, Perl, Python. Uh, it tells the shell what prime program to interpret the script with when it's executed. And um, we can check again with the file command to see whether uh, the type of the file change after we uh, edit the interpreter line on the top, the shebang. And if we type file w count, you can see that now uh, w count is not any more text file. It is a shell script text executable file. And um, next uh, thing that we are going to talk about, this is uh, variables and uh, a variable in bash can uh, contain a number, a character, a string of characters. Um, you, you have no need to declare a vari variable like in the other programming languages. Just assigning a value to its reference will create it. And if we do even from the command line, file is the name of the variable and then assign Alice text with echo command, we can see the the value, the value of the variable. And when you echo, you need to add the dollar sign in front of the variable name. And in this case, the variable name is file. And you can see that the value of the variable file is Alice because we assign Alice to file. Um, we are going to add this line file equal alice.txt to w count um, and uh, replace uh, uh, cat alice with uh, cat and the variable. Let's open the file again. 
uh, with nano editor. And after the shebang, you can assign the value to the variable file. How equal equal Alice dot txt and instead of get Alice, we are going to use the variable file and then I'm going to save the changes with control O control O save the changes in W count press enter and then with control X we are back to the command line. And this is the changes that we made in the file. Uh, we added the variable and we are using the variable in the cat command. And um, if we execute double count, you can see that our little script still uh, works. Um, it's a good practice to put the variable name in double quotes uh, because sometimes it's not a good practice, but the file name can contain space. And if you don't uh, put the variable name in uh, double quotes, then it's going to treat the name as two different instances, which we don't want to do and the shell script is not going to work. <clears throat> and uh, now we are going to talk about the command line parameters. The programs can be executed with one or more parameters. And um, we are going to change W count uh, script one more time. So any file can be specified from the command line, not only alice.txt, but we can give a different name. And um, change w count, uh, so any files can be specified from the command line. And this is dollar sign one stands for the first parameter from the command line. And let's do nano w count. And instead of assigning Alice to the file variable, we are going to assign dollar sign one. And this is going to pull the first parameter from the command line assign it to the variable file, and then the variable is going to be used in cat, which makes the script more flexible and we can apply it to any uh, text file and get the top 20 uh, most frequent words in the text that we want to process. And with control O, I'm going to save the change and confirm it, the file name and control X. And now I can execute double W count and we can do Alice, the first parameter here and still get the same uh, result. But Alice can be replaced with any um, text file. And um, we are going to create a new file named parameter with nano uh, editor, we can type param. And this is going to create uh, and open in nano uh, empty uh, file called param and then we are going to put the shebang on the top to direct uh, direct it on the, file, the first line. On next line, we are going to echo the sign. 
save and make the executable and run it. And this is the, the file, the content of the file. We are going to start with the shebang, which is bin.sh and then echo the first parameter. <clears throat> and I'm going to save this, control O and control X. And this is what is inside. And we can, um, if we, we, we need also to change the permissions because if we take a look, it is slow today, what's going on on the server? Okay, our uh, little program is here, param, and we don't have executable um, permissions and we are going to use change mod add executable to all groups for the file param. And as you can see, the color changed to green and we have all the executable permissions for all three groups. If we execute the file like this, we are not going to get anything on the screen because it's expecting to get the first parameter and the first parameter is missing. We don't get anything. But if we run parameter with Alice, it's going to echo Alice on the screen. And if we give more than one parameter, for example, AA is the first parameter, BB is the second and CC is the third one, we are going to get only the first because the program wants to echo the first parameter and we get AA. And um, dollar sign hashtag is give you the number of parameters, how many parameters uh, you have. And if we open nano, and we add echo dollar sign uh, hash. This is going to echo the number of parameters that are on the command line uh, after the script and also echo the first parameter. Let's save this, control O, control X, and if we execute uh, the last line, which is uh, parameter A, A, B, B, C, C with three different um, arguments on the line of parameters, we are going to get that we have three arguments and uh, the first argument is going to be uh, print out. And um, we, we already um, complete this exercise where Alice was substituted with, if you look at the content of uh, uh, W count, we substituted the Alice text with the uh, parameter, uh, the first parameter from the command line. And before we had Alice a file equal to Alice and we change it to dollar sign one. And we already, another very useful command is if you type control R, this is reverse research. And if I start the, to write the, command, you can see that 
it pops double account, Alice, because I already executed this. And just pressing enter is going to execute the command. And it's useful when you already have uh, some long commands and you want to go back to them with control R, starting typing to type the uh, beginning of the command that you want to execute and you'll get this. And um, next uh, thing that we are going to talk about is uh, if statement. Um, the if statement is the fundamental control statement that allows Shell to make decisions and execute statements uh, conditionally. If um, the statement, um, if the condition is true, then everything that is in the body of uh, the if statement is going to be executed. If not, is not going to be executed. Again, it starts with if and it's closed with fi. And this is the body of the uh, if statement. There is conditions uh, that needs to be evaluated. And if the conditions evaluate to true, then the statements in the body are uh, executed. If not, uh, is not going to uh, get any actions. Um, it is recommended to be very careful with the spaces between the brackets, where is the condition, because no space produces syntax error. It is very sensitive. And uh, there are different uh, types of uh, conditions, standard comparison, extended comparison, the, um, the square brackets are for extended and uh, and um, these brackets are used for mathematical comparison. And we are going to use the extended comparison in the example. Um, for example, if we had a variable uh, named count, uh, this is how you can evaluate the condition with uh, EQ stands for equals. Um, Basically, this condition it says if count equals 100, then do whatever it's in the body of the if statement. If not, the if statement will be um, closed. And uh, NE is not equal, and GT is greater. Instead of the mm. equal sign um, or explanation, exclamation point equal for not equal. This is the way how you compare things in the if statements. And um, for example, in the file that we had param, we can check what is the number of, uh, of the parameters. And if we have, if it's not equal to one, then we can write some statement and execute it. And um, for example, if it's not equal to one, if we um, use not only Alice, but for example, more than one parameter, then the if statement will echo w count file and exit the system. And um, there is in the workshop directory another file, which is called if. And you, we can see the content of if. And in order to be executable, we have to change the permissions of the file because right now there is no executable and let's do this we change mat plus uh, plus x and then the name of the file check now we have if with executable permissions and if 
we execute the file if without parameters, this condition is not going to be satisfied. And uh, it, it, it is going to be satisfied because zero is not equal to one. And that's why that statement inside is executed. If we use uh, one parameter exactly, we are not going to get any echo on the, on the screen because one is equal to one and this condition returns false and it skips the F statement body. If we try to execute with more than one, it's going to be also false. It, it is not equal to one, which is going to return true and we are going to get the same message. From the three cases, only the second one where we had one uh, parameter, uh, this condition return uh, for, uh, true and uh, it, it returned false and that's why we got, we didn't get any message from the program. And um, you can check, for example, um, what is uh, the file and minus AF is a regular file. This is different types of uh, commands. For example, minus E, uh, you check whether the file exists, minus F, uh, whether the file is a regular file, minus D file is a, it checks whether it's a directory and there are many more um, operators um, and you can use them to check uh, what is the um, file um, and this is we are not going to to execute this because uh, we don't have time and um, there are uh, more uh, commands that we would like to introduce today. And uh, this is a while um, condition where we um, can evaluate, this is a mathematical evaluation because we use these uh, uh, brackets. And um, for example, if we have a variable i equal to seven and then uh, while loop starts with the word while, the keyword, and ends with done. And the body starts with the do. And the, if this condition is evaluated to true, then it goes into the body and executes the statement. And basically here, we have um, a variable i, which is uh, the value is seven. And if seven is greater than four, then it's going to echo the value of i and sub reduce the value by one of the i and then go back to the loop. And i equals seven. We can check the value of i with dollar sign i. And we can see that uh, i got a sign seven. And then we are going to type while space and then two brackets space and dollar sign i space greater space four space and close the two brackets and make sure that you have the spaces before and after the brackets and uh, then do and echo our sign i and we are going to reduce the value 
of i with the following expression. Expression space dollar sign i minus one and close the bracket. And done. And you can see that the loop was executed uh, three times because seven is greater than four, got into the body of the while loop, echoed the value of i, reduced the value of i, which is becoming six, and then go back and check six greater than four, yes, and echo the value of i, which is six, reduce the value one more time, it becomes five, goes back to the loop. Five is greater than four. Go and execute echo five and reduce the value of i to four. Go back and four greater than four returns false and you're out of the loop. And if we echo the value of i, you can see that the value is four now. And that's why this condition was, um, is returning false and the execution is stopped. And um, another um, loop is four. Um, you can do iteration to a list of variables or values and um, Again, the body of four starts with the keyword four, and uh, it's similar to the while loop. It ends with done, and the body starts with two. And if I type four, i is the iterator and the variable that goes and checks a, b, c. We have three different values here. Do and echo the value of the variable i and done. We get a, b, and c. For example, if we want to check what is the um, to list all the files in the current directory, and we are in the workshop directory and we have all these files here. Um, we are going to, if we write this for uh, loop, we'll see all these files printed from it. And let's do it for file with the name as the variable or the iterator in and this is how you assign the value to the list. LS of the variable and do and LS the value of the file variable and done. And you can see that we got Alice if novel.txt, param, uh, read your mind and w count. Um, if you have, um, we can do one more exercise with the for loop where we have um, a list of values and for i in curly brackets one. And this is with double dots, you specify a range and you close and then do and echo Our sign i is the value of the iterator or the variable times and done. You can see that 
it goes through the for loop and get one uh, is assigned to uh, I goes in the body and echo repeat the value of I is one one times and then goes and checks whether there are more uh, values to be assigned gets two to assign to I and goes in the body repeat two times and then the last one it's three repeat three times and um, uh, when we write um, uh, scripts and programs it is very important to have uh, comments um, because maybe we will write the script and don't use it for a while and when we need to go back and see um, what we done it's nice to have comments to remind, remind ourselves what we did and most importantly if you decide to share your scripts with a colleague or somebody else they can easily open the script read the comments and see what the comment is doing and the way to uh, add comments in uh, uh, a program uh, is with the hashtag they can start on uh, on a, a separate line or you can add them after uh, the comment itself and uh, if we open for example, with nano, the if statement, we can try, um, for example, we can do this. Uh, hash and this is a comment. or try to edit after the echo command here. Uh, the, the interpreter will know that everything that is after the hash is a comment and is not going to execute it. And with control O, you can save uh, the changes and control at X, you are going to be out of the file. And um, we have one minute left. If you have any questions, please let us know. And at the end of the slides, yeah, next week, we have the intro to high-performance computing. Do we have any questions? Thanks, Anna. There hasn't really been any. Um, there was a question about if the slides will be shared, and I, I confirmed that we will uh, be sharing them after uh, this for people to review. OK, then um, I think that we are done for today with the first workshop. Thank you so much for uh, joining uh, us and participating in the today's workshop and hope to see you next week for intro to HPC. Thanks, Xenia. Thank you, Michael. <laughs>